It's like he'll tell you that, it's like, he, it's like he'll be saying to one of the concerts, yeah, when I was working for your dad, and you're like, dude, you never worked for my dad. Yeah, I did, man. You mustn't have known. Dad, your dad mustn't have told you. Oh, come on, buddy. <laughs> like, I think I would know if you worked for my dad because I worked there. You know, that, like, there's, uh, anybody know that guy or that girl? They have that person that just honestly has taken it too far where they just almost can't tell the truth anymore? The root of that, honestly, psychologically, the root of that is that they are insecure. That they want to be somebody that they're not, that they're not happy with who they are, even though the person that who they are could be an, an awesome person. But somewhere along the lines, they've convinced themselves that they need to be someone else. This brother relationship that we have going on uh, with Jacob and Esau, they're twins. But Esau is the guy that popped out of mama first. And Jacob was holding on, the Bible says, was holding on to his heel. So we call Jacob the heel grabber. But the actual uh, name Jacob actually means the deceiver. So Jacob, the heel grabber, the guy that's always wanting to follow his brother, that's holding on to his brother's heel. Do you see the imagery of this? He, he is called by name the deceiver. Esau, by birthright, gets everything. He's loved the most by his father. I look at it this way. The Bible views Esau as a manly, hairy man, because anybody that's hairy is very manly. And, and uh, yeah, me and you, buddy. And, uh, and, and, and Jacob, it describes him as smooth-skinned. So I'm going to explain it this way. Jacob's the dude, or sorry, Esau's the dude, and Jacob's the girly man. Okay, he's the one that's a real mama's boy that, that, you know, can't go out and cut wood and race cars and spit and chew tobacco and stuff like that. You know, he's never played hockey a day in his life. That's Esau. He does all of that. Jacob. Jacob's the dude that's in there cooking with mommy and learning how to sew and, like, you know, mending socks and stuff like that. that that's, that's Jacob. So to give you that imagery of the, the relationship that they've got, John's laughing because he's like, I was mending socks with my mom last night. <laughs> and Abby's going, yeah, I'm married to him. Anyway, they're not married either. So anyway, um, <laughs> the spectrum that we have here is, is Esau, who is totally loved by dad, and he has all the birthright simply because he came. He, how do I explain that a little bit more? Um, he was birthed before Jacob. How's that sound? Instead of popping out a mom. He was, he was birthed. A li- he, just, he just was birthed a couple seconds earlier. Jacob's right behind him holding on to his heel, but that makes him the older brother, and that gives him all the rights. So here's Jacob, who's loved by mom, and Esau, who's loved by dad, which in, it, in an essence is a bad situation on its own. But Esau, Esau is definitely a guy. Because Esau, he comes in uh, from hunting one time, and he's exhausted. Jacob doesn't hunt, right? He mends socks. And, and so Esau comes in, and he is like totally tired, and he is starving. And he's like, honey, where is the food? And of course, Jacob's there, because he's the one preparing the food. And, and he's like, well, I got, I got lentil soup here, um, but you got to sell me your birthright for this soup. And so Esau's like, whatever, dude, man, just give me the soup. I'm hungry. It's totally a guy. So Jacob's laughing because now his brothers just sold his birthright over to him. It goes a little bit further because because mom loves Jacob. And so mom decides that that when dad is on his deathbed, that Jacob should be the one that gets the blessing, the father's blessing, meaning it's kind of like if you're a farmer, they're going to give Jacob the farm instead of Esau the farm, right? The older brother's supposed to get the farm, but the little brother ends up with the farm, that kind of thing. Can anybody, anybody hear farm? Wow, that was a poor analogy. (laughs) Um, You know, those traditions, right? The, the, The blessing that he would get, that it would be him that would carry on the family name, that it would be him that would kind of be the important one in the family. And Jacob slips in, 
And he steals that from Esau. Now, we know the story, right, that, that he put on animal skin so that he would feel like he was furry, like his brother, and his brother was out actually doing the man thing and killing things and, and doing it for dad, but they totally deceived dad. See, Jacob is all about deception. He's all about lying. He's all about being who he really isn't. And he deceives even the people he loves. Now, he gets a little bit freaked out in the story about all of this because Esau finds out what he's done and Esau, being a hairy, manly man, is about ready to kick his butt. And so he, he goes after him and, and so Jacob flees and he goes to his uncle's place. He goes to Laban's house. Now, he goes to Laban's tent, it says, and, and, which is a house, and he goes to his house and he starts to work for Laban because Jacob's like, yeah, dude, your, your daughter's hot. And so um, I, I really like to marry your daughter. And Laban's like, okay, that's fine. Just work for me for seven years and you can marry my daughter. And so Jacob does exactly that. Now, Laban is Rebecca's brother. It's Jacob's aunt or uncle. He has deception in his blood. He is all about living a lie too. And he totally pulls the wool over Jacob's eyes because he makes him work for seven years and then gives him the ugly daughter. <laughs> Leah. It says. Yeah. It, it, she, she's not, it's not the daughter he wanted. He wanted Rebecca. But he got Leah. Sorry, Rachel, not Rebecca. Rebecca, that's creepy. I just said he wanted his mom. (laughs) (sighs) Bible times were weird. You never know. He wanted Rachel, but he got Leah. So he had to work another seven years, 14 years in total to get the bride that he wanted. So the deceiver, Jacob, has now been deceived. So you think, now, he's, he's got the wife he wants. He treats her better, but oh well, right? It's Bible times. It doesn't really matter. You got many wives. And, and so he has all kinds of children, right? 11 children. It's, I said, during this time, Jacob fathered 11 sons and one uh, daughter. So he's got 12 in total at this time. And he's also become extremely wealthy. Extremely wealthy. So it's interesting to look at this Bible story because God is blessing someone that is full of crap. God is blessing the guy that is deceiving people and lying to people and being someone that he's not. He already faked to be Esau and he wasn't Esau to get something that he didn't deserve. And God blesses him. Yeah, he had to work 14 years to get the woman that he wanted to marry, but hey, it was worth it, right? And he fell. He found out what deception was all about. He found out what it actually felt like to be deceived. And so he starts to concoct his own version of how he is now going to screw over Laban. And so they get this whole thing going with their, with their flock, with their sheep, where he's marking uh, different sheep, and, and he, he's totally screwing over Laban, and where he, Jacob, is getting all of the good sheep and Laban is getting all of the junk and so then he takes off it's time to go reconcile with my brother Esau so I'm going to go back home and he takes all of his wealth all of his riches his wives his children everything he's got his two maid servants everything and off he goes heading back to reconcile with Esau but he's scared So he goes all these years where he works the 14 years, honestly works the 14 years, gets what he deserves, gets his wives, goes all these years without deceiving, all these years without doing this, he spins it around and goes to total deception to screw his uncle, then starts heading home to see Esau. He's worried about how Esau's going to react And so what does he turn to instead of just being honest with Esau and saying, Esau, man, I'm really sorry. You're my brother. I love you. I want to reconcile with you. Instead, he sends sends sheep up ahead. Like, here, here, take this bribe. 